Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Shubham this side. Now in this video, let us talk about the complete Python programming roadmap that starts from the basics and should be enough for you to get a job as a full-time developer or maybe as an intern in any good company. Remember, the complete roadmap is designed for beginners. That means if you are someone who is going to start Python programming for the very first time or maybe someone who's trying to learn about programming for the first time, it's recommended for you. Now, moving forward, I strongly recommend you to grab a cup of coffee or maybe tea and a proper notebook as well as pen because we are going to talk about multiple modules as well as multiple fields. So this is going to be a big lecture, a big video and it is really important for you to jot all the points that is going to be important for you and you can refer them in future. Remember, I follow the exact same roadmap for my own courses, my own boot camps. So maybe you want to get more details about the curriculum or maybe you want to get some information about the description or technology. Make sure to check out the complete bundle. I will add the link in the description. Make sure to utilize the coupon code YouTube to get extra 10% off or you can visit courses.unwildlearning.com. That's it. Now let us move forward and discuss about the complete roadmap. The complete roadmap is divided into 12 to 15 module covering the basic concept, intermediate as well as advanced concept and then tons of project. The design of the roadmap is important because I have followed the project building approach. You are going to learn everything in the form of concept and then you are going to apply them in the form of project. So it is pretty important for you to understand both the part. Now let's start our journey with basic. The first thing I strongly recommend you to understand Python. Python in terms of where you can utilize Python in future, in which field you can use Python or what is the scope of Python. Once you are clear with that, just talk about installation, talk about data types, operator, input and output, understand IDs, which is different editors, talk about control statement, loops, and then function. So this is pretty important for you as a beginner. This is like foundational concept. And I strongly recommend you to take some time. Don't try to hurry too much with this stage. Once you get clear with them, it is easy for you to start working with other intermediate concept. So make sure you spend some time with them and understand things according to your own pace. Now let's move towards intermediate section where we talk about object oriented programming. Now this section is pretty important in terms of interviews as well as for all the big projects that you are going to work. Here we talk about classes, objects, then we are going to talk about encapsulation, talk about private as well as public method, there is getter and setter, then we have inheritance and also operator overloading. There are a lot of other things that you are going to cover in this particular section. Once that is done, I also recommend to talk about error handling as well as file handling and then talk about packages. So Python is famous for its package management system. So there are a number of libraries, number of packages that are available with Python ecosystem. I strongly recommend you to work with few at this point of time. This will give you a basic understanding about how different libraries with Python work and also it will give you a basic understanding on how to apply all the concepts that you have learned till now in a small single project. So here I strongly recommend to build few small projects using maybe OpenCV library for face detection or maybe random module for automated password generator. So there are a lot of things that you can do here and I strongly recommend to utilize all the concept that you have learned till now and apply here. Now let's move towards our module 2 in which we are going to talk about our advanced concept. Now this is pretty important. This is going to give you an edge over other developers. Uh, so here we are going to talk about recursion, map, filter, reduce. Then we have regular expression. Then you are going to talk about updates with Python 3.8 which will be about walrus operator, then there is positional only parameter, then you are going to talk about updates with 3.9, which is type hinting, union operators, or maybe zone info, 
Here you also need to talk about logging, date and time, decorators and lot more thing. So these are Python advanced concept and this will give you an edge over other developers because these topic are not covered by everyone. So I strongly recommend you to look on these topic and this will surely give you more information about Python. Now after completing your basic, intermediate and advanced concept, I strongly recommend you to practice questions on hacker rank. So they have approximately 50 to 100 question covering basic, intermediate and advanced part. So I strongly recommend you to jump there and cover all the basic, at least basic question and then according to your own requirement. The important thing is they have star system, maybe one star, two star, three star Python developer. So just follow that and regularly follow hacker rank. It will help you to understand different concepts that you have learned till now and also help you to practice and build your skill towards Python. So you will understand how to build logic at a certain level. At this point of time, I strongly recommend to practice as much as possible. You can utilize hacker rank or if you have any other website in mind, you can utilize that. But make sure you practice all the concept that you have learned till now. Here, I also recommend you to read common interview questions. So there will be approximately 50 to 100 common interview questions that is going to consist of basic to advanced concept. And I strongly recommend to grab these questions. It is going to take you maybe a few hours, but these are pretty important in long run. Once that is done, I strongly recommend you to jump onto projects. Try to spend your time for next few weeks with different projects. Projects in which you are going to work with APIs, projects in which you are going to work with automation, projects in which you are going to understand how to work with different Python libraries. So this is pretty important phase for you. You have learned all the concept till now and then implement them with the help of project. So in module 3, I strongly recommend to utilize some API as well as a Python library. Here I recommend about Kinter which is a desktop application library. You can utilize Python and Kinter to build a desktop application. And you can utilize free API. Here we use CoinMarketCap API to build a project. Once that is done, I strongly recommend you to utilize database. Maybe you can utilize MySQL or SQLite 3 to integrate and build something. This is going to be important in terms of APIs you are going to understand what endpoint is or maybe you are going to understand different parameters. The second thing is you are going to also understand about basic of databases, how Python connect with database or how information is stored in different databases. So this is important for you in module three. Then moving forward, I strongly recommend to utilize or build a bot. Here I recommend you to build a Twitter bot in which you can just automate about your tweets, your retweets and everything that you can utilize with Twitter developer account. Moving forward, I strongly recommend to build a project around web scraping. So Python is very popular for web scraping and working with beautiful soup. It is one of the most popular Python library. There are bundles of freelancing projects that are using this beautiful soup library to build web scraping projects. I strongly recommend to just explore this part and understand how web scraping work and if possible try to integrate maybe mailing system that you can scrape some data and auto send auto mail that data to your own email address or maybe to someone else. This is going to be pretty important for you to understand the most popular Python library as well as towards the automation part. Now the next thing I am going to talk about data analysis. So talk about pandas. This is one of the most popular scientific library for data analysis. Just take some random data about website traffic or maybe something related to your own task. Take that data and work with that data. Try to filter it, try to clean it and get more information about that data. So this is important and pandas is super important for you in terms of your Python journey. Here you will also understand about Jupyter Notebook or how to work with a CSV file, maybe JSON file or maybe your Excel file. So this is important. The next thing I want to talk about again a new project in which 
maybe use any API or try to automate something. Here I strongly recommend to work with Pillow. Pillow is also a Python library which help you to work with images. So you can try to customize some images, try to utilize Python as well as Pillow and then do certain tasks. So I will add more information. Make sure to check out the curriculum which I talked about at the very beginning. You can utilize the curriculum and see what you can do. Now once that is done, all the small projects are done. You have utilized all the information, all the concept that you have learned till now with these projects. You also get experience on how to work with Google regarding your doubts, how to build your own projects, how to work with different freelancing tasks in terms of automation as well as in terms of scripting. Now it's good time for you to jump onto the big project, which is web development. So Django is one of the most popular framework in this world. There are tons of websites that are utilizing this framework. Instagram use Django, then there is Spotify, and there are tons of other big companies. So make sure to utilize the power of Django. This is one of the most popular framework and you have to utilize this. So I strongly recommend you to understand Django, build a maybe a proper task manager website in which you can apply CRUD functionality, which is create, retrieve, update, and delete. Just create a to-do list manager. This will help you to understand everything that you can utilize with Django. Once that is done, try to implement authentication that will also help you to understand databases as well as how multiple profile works. Now Django is also important for you to understand MVT, which is model view template. This architecture is pretty important for your web development journey. There are a lot more things with Django in terms of principle and there are a lot of patterns. So this is pretty important for you to understand. Once that is done, once your authentication part is done, make sure to integrate and deploy it on an online server. You can use Heroku or maybe any other service maybe AWS, maybe DigitalOcean, and just deploy your web application. This will also give you an experience how Python with a framework can utilize to make a website and can go live on a proper domain and then you can utilize it from anywhere. So this is going to help you to just create something and just share with your friends, share with recruiters and add it in your resume. Now here, I strongly recommend you to read common interview question, maybe 50 to 100 common interview questions related to Django. Django itself is a big topic and most of the time you are going to apply as a Django developer or Python Django developer. So there are going to be tons of interview questions related to Django. So just take a pause and read about 50 to 100 most common interview questions related to Django and it is going to help you a lot in long run. Now try to take a break and start working on your self project. Self projects are pretty important. Just try to utilize your previous learning. Maybe try to mix up two or three projects and create a self project. Self projects are also important to bring out your own creativity. At this point of time, you have enough knowledge about Python and its libraries. Try to input your own ideas. These self projects are also important to bring out your own creativity. Maybe you want to add a new feature. Maybe you want to just develop something according to your own ideas. So this can be anything. This can be something small or something very big that is going to take you weeks. So this is pretty important to bring out your own creativity. And these type of self projects help you to get the job. These self projects are unique. You can add them in your resume and you can customize it according to your requirement. Till now you have been following a set of curriculum. Till now you have been following some courses. Till now you have been following maybe some tutorial. But with self project, you can input everything that you have in your mind. So this is going to be pretty important for you at this stage. Now till now we have been talking about Python, Python and Python. But you have to understand once you work with actual project, once you work with team, you have to collaborate. You have to use their resources, their file, and they have to utilize your, your code, your file. So you have to understand two topics, which is Git as well as GitHub. And these are pretty important. Even if you are JavaScript developer, Java developer, PHP developer, no matter what, every single tech company uses it and no roadmap talk about it. 
So I strongly recommend to understand Git and GitHub. GitHub is an online space where you store your code and Git is the tool for, with the help of that you can send your code and receive your code. This is the basic thing but you have to understand everything in depth. So at this point of time with this module I strongly recommend to understand Git and GitHub. Once that is done this is the bare minimum that you should know as a Python developer. But if you want to excel it, if you want to take one step ahead, I strongly recommend to understand data structures and algorithm in depth. Now data structures is that one leap of faith that give you tons of opportunity in terms of product based companies. So you have to understand if you want to take that extra big step, you have to talk about data structures and algorithm. So DSA itself is a big topic. But let me give you a brief. I have covered this complete topic, this complete roadmap in my course as I have discussed. So if you want to get the exact curriculum, I strongly recommend to just visit the DSA course and just jump onto the curriculum part. You will get the exact information lecture wise lecture. So in DSA, I strongly recommend to understand the fundamental things of logarithm, of memory, of big O notation and everything which is pretty basic. Then talk about different data structures like arrays, linked lists, stack and queue, hash table, trees, heap, tries and then graph. This is the bare minimum that I strongly recommend every single student. Now once you are comfortable with them, with their concept first thing, with their implementation second thing and with their complexities. So these are the three important points that you have to understand with every single data structure. Now once that is done, you have to talk about different other concepts in terms of algorithm. So make sure you understand about searching algorithm, make sure you understand about sorting algorithm and then make sure you understand about tree as well as graph traversal algorithm. So this is going to be bare minimum. Once you complete this, now it's up to you how well you perform with DSA practice. So at this point of time, you have to turn lot of practice in term of data structures and algorithm interview question. Here, I strongly recommend you to work with lead code. After completing all these concepts, just spend some time solving interview questions on lead code for each and every single topic. If you want to get into a proper product based company, if you are just aiming for a decent startup, maybe you don't have to practice that much, but if you want to get into fang like company, you have to spend a lot more time. So just make sure you make your roadmap according to your own requirement. I strongly recommend here to at least solve 30 to 50 questions if you want to get into any decent company. Remember lead code is free to utilize. So you can jump there, check out their question, check out their hint as well as the discussion and then implement your own solution. This is going to build up your habit and I recommend you to solve at least 20 questions after completing your data structures and algorithm part. That's it. That's the complete roadmap that you should follow as a beginner to become a market ready Python developer. Now the other thing is there are few optional modules that I strongly want to recommend. So once you have completed this, if you want to get into backend development, I strongly recommend you to also talk about Django REST framework. So this is a particular backend framework that help you to build APIs and it's a production ready framework. So make sure to check it out after you complete all these current module. The next thing is throughout your own journey, understand the power of Googling stuff. So if you have any doubt, try to Google it. Maybe if you have enrolled into my course, if you have enrolled into any other course, just understand the power of Google. If you have any doubt, try to Google stuff, every single stuff. This is one habit that I strongly recommend to every single student. Even if you haven't enrolled into my course, just understand this power. No one is going to talk about this. No one is going to tell about the secret, but make sure you understand to Google your question. Once you start doing that in a couple of weeks, in a couple of months, as you practice, you understand our ability to ask the right question to Google. So maybe once you get into a big project, you are going to face hundreds of problem. And at that very stage, if you have good understanding what to search on Google, 
to solve that particular problem, your Googling skill is going to work. The other thing I strongly recommend after doing all this is to create a good resume. Maybe you can talk about this as a module or maybe you can talk about this as an external skill, but maybe you have knowledge of everything, but you need a good resume to showcase your skill to someone. You need a good LinkedIn profile, you need a good GitHub profile, and you need a good resume. So take some time, spend some time on building that good resume. Maybe you want some external help, maybe you want a video course, maybe you want a YouTube course, anything, any free stuff, maybe you want a blog, just spend some time creating that resume, good resume. The biggest problem with at this point of time with most of these students, they spend time learning about things, but they don't spend time showcasing these things. You need to understand, you have learned thousands of things, but how you are going to showcase the best among them. So that's where resume comes into picture. So make sure you build a good one. Don't try to add every single thing, but just make sure you understand this point. So just take time, consider this as a module, consider this as a task in your Python development roadmap itself and build a good resume. The next thing is about open source. This is total optional, but I strongly recommend this. I strongly recommend to understand about open source contribution as well as writing blog. So I'm going to create a new video about this to about open source contribution as well as writing regular tech blogs. So this is pretty important, but make sure you understand this point also. That's it. That's the complete roadmap to start your journey from basics, understand tons of concept, practice them, work with different Python libraries and different projects, practice them, talk about Django framework, which is pretty important to work with backends and then build your own project, then work with data structures and algorithm and then practice your interview question. Now the optional thing is after completing all this, if you want to get into backend development, I strongly recommend Django REST framework and then build your own resume. All of this is done, then you have to create a habit about open source project or maybe to work on a freelancing project or maybe to write regular blog post on LinkedIn, Medium or your own platform. So this is going to be a habit for a long time. That's it. That's the complete roadmap to start your journey from basic and become a market ready Python developer. Now I follow the exact same curriculum for my own courses and bootcamp. So if you want to enroll, check out the link in the description. Also utilize the coupon code YouTube to get extra 10% off. And the important thing is the complete bundle is under 2000 rupees or $25. So you get access to everything for one year, video lectures, resources, question answer support, and also the further updates, the all the future updates that we are going to do. Everything under 170 rupees per month, which is under 2000 rupees, under $25. You get access to everything, all the projects, concept, quizzes, assignment, everything for less than 2000 rupees for one year, the complete curriculum. Make sure to check this out and utilize the coupon code YouTube. Thank you for following and I hope you like this video. Make sure to hit a like. If you have any question, add that in the comment section and make sure to subscribe. I'm bringing out lot more crash courses on YouTube. I'm bringing out lot more these information videos on YouTube. So make sure to subscribe this channel. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one.